Hello, this is Red and April, and welcome to our off-grid home build. When we decided to try Aircrete as a building material, we knew that it would be a challenge, but we really had the confidence that we could figure it out and make it work well for us. There doesn't seem to be that much information on what's known about it, so we had to do our own testing. So we went through an initial round of pretty extensive testing where we made numerous te test batches and tested several mixes, ratios, and additives to see how that affected the aircrete mixture. Those were interesting tests and we were pretty encouraged. We then went on to start building our garden wall. We struggled with consistency and actually just haven't been able to achieve the kind of good quality mix that we were getting in our original tests. This partially led us to do another round of tests, which we'll be sharing with you in today's video. Here we'll be testing our standard mix against a thickening agent. We'll also be dry testing all of our previous samples. Remember in our original sample run we tested them all wet. Now we've let them dry and we'll be testing them all dry. That's an interesting comparison. All right, here we are beginning our next round of test batches. Uh, we're optimistic here. We're, we're hopeful that this is going to work out and we've made a few modifiers. We realize that the temperatures may be affecting our kind of foam solution. And so we decided to adjust our air pressure just a little bit. Our testing was showing that our foam solution was getting a little denser, kind of drifting towards the denser end of the spectrum. We thought that may be due to uh, temperature or the changing of the seasons. Anyway, we decided to modify that a little bit. So here we are getting all set up and kind of ready to go with this test batch. We're going to be making a test sample of our standard mix and comparing that to a mixture that has an additive in it. And so just getting that set up and ready to go. We ended up using a different type of Portland cement this time, just because everyone in town was out of the type 1 through 2 Portland that we had been using. So we ended up having to go with the type 2 through 5 Portland cement. And we were interested to see if it might actually work a little better. It has a little bit different curing properties, so we decided to go with it. So here we've made a batch and we're pouring it in. And it's looking pretty good. We're, we're pretty excited about this. It, it looks nice going in. This is a, as good a looking aircrete as we've made in a while, so we're hoping this will turn out well. And now we're moving on to our next batch where we're adding a thickening agent. Really curious to see you know, what this does to the mix. If you want more information on the thickening agent, just look in the description of the video. Both of these test batches were full batches, so we're making full batches here. Yeah, as you can see here, the mixer that April's using is just the hand drill mixer. Uh, she actually prefers it. It's less heavy. And, you know, honestly, when we, we had our double mixer, which we were using to make some of the garden wall, so here we, we are going back to the original mixer. Um, I also have kind of a wooden paddle Thing that <laughs> that I use to try to get the stuff from the bottom up to the top and so I use that to, to help stir it up here. Here we are pouring this mix in and again you know this mix looks pretty good. We were encouraged as we put it in it seems to have a nice uh, consistency you know we're not seeing just a, a ton of air bubbles coming out of it. Uh, smooths up nice and looks reasonably, reasonably good. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before we started seeing some settlement in our standard mix. The temperature that we poured them was about the same and a, a nice temperature. We didn't think that was a cause. But sadly, the standard mix started falling. And you really shouldn't see any falling. You know, it's only four and a half inches deep. You shouldn't see any significant settlement. But that whole batch fell. And here we are the next day taking the forms off of the standard mix test sample. As you can see, it fell pretty good, you know, probably close to an inch. Uh, pretty disappointing. You know, this was a total failure. Also, the next batch, which was the batch with the thickener, fell on one side. So, you know, we did get one decent sample out of it. So it seemed to hold up a little better, but far from perfect as well. This was overall a pretty disappointing failure. You know, the only thing we changed was the cement type, and so we thought maybe that's the problem. So we waited a few days until we were able to acquire some of the type 1 through 2 cement, and we decided to try it again. So we repeated the process, made a standard mix, uh, followed by a, a mix that had a thickening agent to you know, just kind of reset and try it again with 
you know, all the variables the same as what we were using when we did all of our standard test samples, hoping we wouldn't have any more problem with the aircrete falling. So here we are pouring in the standard mix batch that we just created. Uh, we decided to try to kind of whip it or mix it a little longer and try to get it a little moosier. Uh, seemed to have some good luck with that during our original testing. Thought maybe that's something we had changed and uh, so tried to go back to exactly how we were doing it during the testing. So this, as you can see, as it goes in, is thicker. And so I have to kind of use the trowel and, and try to work it into the corners and, and make sure we get it you know, pressed down all the way. Now we're moving on to the next batch uh, with the thickening agent additive. We're doing half batches for these this test round, just like we did on our original test samples. Uh, this batch turned out you know just about like the one we had just made, so they seem pretty even and consistent and mixed the same way. This one's also you know pretty moussey and thick. It went in well and smoothed out well, and and it looked like a really good batch. Didn't see a lot of air bubbles coming out, so. You know, we had high hopes that these would be some really good test samples. One thing to note here is the temperatures. We get some pretty wild temperature swings in this part of the country. And so, you know, up in the days we we're getting, you know, up into the mid 70s. And then at nights we we're getting down, you know, slightly below freezing or sometimes well below freezing at night. So pretty extreme temperature swings. Um, but we had these stored kind of under cover and under our RV. And so we we're hoping that they would, you know, stay above freezing and make it through the night without getting too cold. Here I'm starting to remove the forms from these last two samples. Sadly, you know, these, both of these samples did fall, which we were really surprised about. We didn't have any trouble with them falling in our first, you know, batch of samples. Uh, these didn't fall as bad as the last two we made, but they still fell, which I was disappointed with, but we felt like they were okay for testing. Here we are starting to weigh the samples. One thing to note here is that the S stands for the standard mix and the H stands for the high pore thickening agent. These all weighed a little less than we expected, uh, considerably less than our original standard mix sample, which weighed 12 pounds, 3.4 ounces. We let these cure for a week and then we went in to test them while they were still wet. Um, this first one was one of the ones mixes that had fallen pretty badly, but we decided to go ahead and test it anyway. And here it is breaking very early, much earlier than we expected, and so I was still using pretty heavy weights, and so we weren't able to get a good measure, but it definitely went disappointingly fast and actually performed worse than any of our previous test samples. This next sample had the thickening agent, and remember that it also had that different Portland cement, and it held exactly the same amount as the last sample, which was 38 pounds. So neither one of these did very well. Now we're going on to our second batch, and this is the standard mix with the regular Portland cement. So we have high hopes for this one. Uh, this one we do get to add a little bit more weight to. And so, so far it's looking promising. We, we started out at a lower weight, just kind of based on the poor performance of the last couple samples we did. This mix did perform better, holding 59 pounds, 8 ounces, but still considerably worse than our original standard mix test sample, which held 70 pounds, 8 ounces. This next sample has the high pore thickening agent and the normal Portland cement. Here I am adding, adding some bricks slowly, hoping this one would do better. It did not. It actually held as much as the last couple of batches. And as you can see here, there's some pretty big air bubbles through it. Um, all of these batches had pretty big air bubbles throughout. And here we are getting set up for the drop test on these samples. We're weighing first, and kind of the weight overall on these was it was a little bit lighter, kind of five and a half pounds compared to more like six and a half pounds that we saw in our previous test batch. As far as the drop test, they, they all performed pretty close to the same with just a little bit of variance between these four samples. And the performance was about 15% worse than our original test samples. So they performed poorly, which we were disappointed to see. You can see that these blocks are all concaved. So these all dropped. And we were trying to figure out what may have caused that. And one possible thing that we're starting to suspect here is the Drexel. We were thinking that we maybe didn't mix it enough, and so we're seeing a, a poor Drexel mix here. 
Um, also, something that may have contributed to their you know, being a lot weaker than the others is it's possible that they froze. We're n we can't be sure that we were able to keep the temperature up above freezing. It got really cold a few nights, and it's possible that they froze and that, that affected the strength. Here we are moving on to dry testing of our first set of samples. We were really curious to see how drying the blocks out completely would change the characteristics. These samples were originally wet cured for a full seven days. The long bricks that we had extras of and the smaller blocks were wet down and covered with plastic for another week, then set out to dry for several more weeks. If you haven't seen our previous two testing videos, I would recommend you watch those. I'll have the link down in the description. This first block is our standard mix block. It was originally 6.3 pounds. So the before is at 0.675. After drying is 0.46. This is our low foam mix and it originally weighed 7.6 pounds. Okay, before drying, 0.47. After drying, 0.35. This one is our one-to-one -one sand mix, and it originally weighed 10 pounds, 4 ounces. Okay, before, 0.275. After drying, drying 0.175. This is our mix with 1.5 pounds of cellulose fiber, and its wet weight was 6.9 pounds. Okay, before is 1.23. After is 0.87. And this block is our mix with three quarter pounds cellulose fiber added. Its wet weight was six pounds even. Okay, this number 14 paper before is 2.17. After is, yeah, it's hard to get it so soft. 1.5. And this next one is our one half to one sand to cement mix, and its wet weight was 8.2 pounds. So before is 0.71, after 0.47. And now we're moving on to strength testing for our dry samples. Here we're testing our number five batch, which was a failed batch of our standard mix and as you can see it didn't perform very well at all it basically broke with 24 pounds 8 ounces on it uh, which was sad because the original one did about twice as good this next sample is our low foam sample now this did best in our original testing holding 113 pounds and here you can see it did amazingly bad holding only 24 pounds when dry this sample is our one-to-one -one sand to cement ratio, and it did better than the others, holding considerably more weight than some of the other dry samples, but still very poorly, holding only 38 pounds, 11 ounces. It originally held 104 pounds, so quite the reduction. The next sample was our ribbed wire test, which we were really curious to find out. Unfortunately, it had already cracked, maybe from mishandling or something, but we weren't able to test it. Fortunately, our chicken wire sample had survived, and so here we are testing it. Going kind of easy here, trying to get a good tight weight, and boy, it just didn't hold very much. It, it broke at 29 pounds, much worse than the original. So this next sample was actually quite interesting. This is our full paper, or the one we added one and a half pounds of cellulose fiber to. It did extremely poorly. It was one of the worst in our wet sample testing, and it only held 30 pounds. So here we are kind of approaching it very gingerly, using the smallest weights because we expected it to break really fast. And here I am running out of small weights. It really surprised us. And so unfortunately, I had to, <laughs> had to take all those weights off, put on a big brick, and then start adding more of those weights. Like I said, this one was a real outlier. Everything else performed much better when wet. This one performed extremely poorly when wet, and we just weren't expecting much out of it because it's kind of a, of, of a soft brick in general. 
but this one was actually really cool. Everything else was doing worse, and this one is actually doing better. We just, every weight we put on, we were surprised yeah. about. <laughs> we ran out of small weights here, and so I had to go with the small brick, which is 14 pounds. <laughs> really surprised us it held 64 pounds 12 ounces over twice as much as it did when wet so paper was the one outlier where drying it actually helped the tensile strength test we expected when testing the dry samples that the compressive strength would improve and the tensile strength would be worse this proved to be true with the only exception being the paper mix because the long paper block still felt much softer than the other samples, we were very surprised that it was twice as strong in both compression and tensile strength. The paper sample was much softer and more fragile than the other samples when removing it from the forms. Because of this, we feel it would be much harder to work with and it would need an extra day in the forms, slowing the build process in half or forcing us to make twice as many forms. Our hope at this point is that the fiberglass fibers and basalt fibers will have the similar benefit without adding the soggy, fragile aspect of the paper fibers. We have some ideas about what is causing our aircrete to fall or have large air bubbles that make it much weaker. We have tried to correct every variable we can think of. We have one last hope before winter to make some successful, strong, and fine bubbled air batches. If we don't succeed in our next set of test batches and the completion of the garden wall, we will be forced to seriously rethink using aircrete to build our house. With our design, the aircrete does not need to be structural because Red is planning to erect a steel frame structure with supports every 8 feet, with the aircrete serving as the inside and exterior walls as well as the insulation. We still need a good and reasonably strong aircrete that won't crack or turn to powder in our walls. The dry tensile strength tests were overall a pretty big disappointment. If you don't want to miss what happens next, be sure to subscribe and ring the little bell to get notified when a new video comes out. We also have a playlist of all of our other aircrete videos, including a video that shows all of the tools that we're using to make aircrete and how much they cost. Our other videos also include more information about what we have learned about making aircrete and the mixes we have tried.